Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the GPD Win 3. Now it did take me a little while to get my hands on one. I was a little hesitant about picking one up given the screen size here only being 5.5 inches. But if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I review a lot of these handheld gaming PCs, and I figured I needed to pick this up before the Steam Deck was released, so once that's released, we can do some comparisons between all of these x86-based handheld gaming PCs. But I've had my hands on this for the last six days, and after using it quite a bit, I'm actually a big fan of this. Now, there is one thing that I'm not keen on with the Win 3, and that's going to be the built-in keyboard. But overall, performance has been great on this little machine, and by the way, this is the i7 version, so we have the Tiger Lake 1165 G7. We got that slide up 5.5 inch HIPS display, built in controls, and the Win 3 does support Thunderbolt 4. So if you did want to connect an eGPU to this to get better performance out of it, you could do it all day. It actually works out really well. We'll take a look at that by the end of this video. So along with Win 3, inside of the box, you're also going to receive your USB Type-C charging cable. We also have our 65 watt power supply, and this did come with a glass screen protector that you can opt to put on or not. I would highly recommend it. When it comes to the built-in controller, we do have a switch over here. It'll put it in mouse mode, and we can use the analog sticks and the triggers kind of like a mouse. Or if we have it set to controller mode, it's going to act like a PS4 or an Xbox controller. We also have a fingerprint sensor over here that allows you to easily log into the device. On the bottom here, we have our USB Type-C 4.0 port. This does support Thunderbolt 4. This will charge the unit up. We can also do display out, or we can connect different Thunderbolt peripherals like an external GPU. Taking a look at the top here, we have a single full-size USB 3.1 port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We also have our volume rocker and our power button, plus four triggers. And when it comes to these triggers, the R2 and L2 buttons are linear. They're analog controllers, so uh, it really helps out with racing games. And if you're not familiar with this, as long as the game supports it, this just gives us a little bit of input if we push it a little bit, or a lot if we go all the way down. And like I mentioned, this is really big for racing games, and this is something that I personally really love about this device. But there is something here that I'm really not a big fan of, and that's the built-in backlit touch keyboard. As you can see, when you slide that 5.5 inch screen up, it does reveal a keyboard. It comes in handy, but I always miss keystrokes with this thing because they're so small. Now in a pinch, I have used this to browse the web and sign into different accounts and things like that. But I do find myself connecting an external wireless keyboard to this uh, when I get frustrated with this touch keyboard. Taking a look around back here, we do have plenty of ventilation for the built-in cooling system. Air will enter the rear, exit the top, and we have two mappable buttons around back here. You can map these to any key or key combination you'd like. As for the internal specs of the unit I have on hand, this one's powered by the i7-1165G7. This is a Tiger Lake mobile processor. 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock of 2.8 GHz with the turbo up to 4.7. Built-in Iris XE graphics, and this is the version with 96 execution units because we have the i7 model here. 16 GB of LPDDR4X running up to 4,266 MHz. A 1TB user replaceable NVMe SSD. We have AX Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0. And as for the screen, it's a 5.5 inch 1280 by 720 HIPS display. 10 points to touch on this, and it's running Windows 10 right out of the box. So before we jump into some benchmarks and some more PC game testing, I just wanted to give you a quick look. We have that i7-1165G7, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, and that built-in Iris XE GPU. Now when it comes to these handhelds or even mini PCs, one thing I always like to do is just make sure that that GPU is running at its maximum clock. And from here, GPD has actually done a really good job. It does fluctuate between 1250 and 1300, but this is really good. 50 megahertz isn't going to make much of a difference, and it does boost up there every once in a while when you're playing games. But uh, yeah, for what they have here, I think they've done a really good job. Now when it comes to the TDP on this unit, Mine came out of the box at about 25 watts, but I have upped this to 30 watts. Running this at 30 watts in handheld mode will definitely kill your battery way faster, but I really wanted to see what kind of performance this thing could put out. You can change this from the BIOS, or you can download a BAT file, which looks something like this, and this allows us to easily change that TDP. Uh, we can go from 5 watts all the way up to 35. I'm sitting at 30, but like I mentioned, I did set this in the BIOS, so it's going to always be there. But if you want to change it on the fly, you can always download a bat like that. I think there's a few available online. A couple things that did come pre-installed were the wind controls. This application was already on the unit. Allows us to customize the built-in controls. 
We also have a GPD Win 3 PDF and the GPD Assistant. And this actually comes in really handy. You can download Steam and Epic through here or just get online and do it. Same thing with a couple others. We have the MSI Afterburner, 3D Acceleration Patch, Joy to Key. But one of the main settings in here that does come in very handy, especially in dock mode, is the resolution settings. Basically, I'm in dock mode right now. It's plugged into my game capture, but I wanted to keep it at 720p. But uh, once you go into dock mode, you can actually open this up and just set it right to 1080 if you're on a bigger monitor. You don't have to mess around with it because when this is using HDMI over USB Type-C, you'll see here, if we're using the external display from within the Windows settings, we actually can't change the resolution because I'm just using that secondary screen. And uh, if I just had it duplicated from the built-in screen to this one, we could only go to 720p. Another way to change this would be from the Intel Graphics uh, Command Center right here. And this is just going to be prepackaged with the latest Intel drivers. But yeah, so far this has been working really, really well. And the first thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks. So let's check those out now and then we'll get right back into some PC gaming. First on the list, we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core score of 1543 and a multi of 5210. Remember, we only have four cores and eight threads here. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid, with the TDP set at 15 watts in Night Raid, total score 9,465. Not that impressive, but as soon as I upped this to 30 watts, we went up to 16,710. So upping the TDP on these Tiger Lake CPUs definitely makes a huge difference. And like I mentioned, everything you're going to see running in this video is at 30 watts. In Fire Strike, we got a total score of 4,975. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,791. So with the benchmarks out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some gaming. First up, we have Cyberpunk 2077. Obviously, we're at 720p because that's the resolution of this screen here. Low settings, and I was actually really surprised here with the latest Intel GPU driver. We got an average of 34 FPS out of this. And if you wanted to lower that resolution scale inside of the game, you could obviously get a little more. But personally, with something like this, I would lock it at 30, 720p, low settings. Maybe we could take a couple of them up to medium, but we could play this at 30 FPS, 720p all day long. When it comes to the rest of the games you're going to see running in this video, I just connected it to my game capture, USB Type-C to HDMI. It makes it a lot easier on me. But we're going to stay at that 720p resolution because that's what we're working with here in handheld mode. Next up we have Forza Horizon 4, 720p with a medium low mix. I got an average of 66 FPS out of this and I've tested this game on the 1165G7 in the past. It actually performs really well as you can see. Witcher 3 did way better than I thought it would, where at 720p low, and going into this I just went down to low settings given that we have those integrated graphics, but I think we could get away with a lot of this stuff set to medium, because with this here, I got an average of 78 FPS. Next on the list, we have Control at 720p, low settings. I got an average of 51. Was hoping to get a little better out of it, but, uh, you know, I'm not complaining given that this is a handheld console. Whenever I test out Fortnite on these mobile CPUs with built-in graphics, I always go to performance mode. It actually works really well on a lot of the stuff that I've tested, and this one's no different. 720p, performance mode, high settings. As you can see, this game is really playable. I wanted to test a fighting game, so I went with Injustice 2, 720p with a medium-low mix. We're at a constant 60 here. This is actually looking really good. Even though we're at 720p, I still think this game is absolutely beautiful. And finally, we have GTA 5, 720p, normal settings. I got an average of 66 FPS by the end of my run here. So
So I'd say this thing actually performs really well at 720p, but one of my favorite things about these Intel-powered x86 handheld gaming PCs is most of the Intel ones do support Thunderbolt. What I have here is a Thunderbolt 3 external GPU. This is actually a water-cooled 2080 Ti. All I need to do is plug it right into the GPD Win 3, give it a second for everything to initiate, and now, instead of using the integrated Intel graphics, I got a 2080 Ti connected to this over Thunderbolt. And this will definitely increase the gaming performance. Now, a 2080 Ti connected to this is definitely a bit overkill. I would go with something like a 1660. I think that would be perfect for this 1165G7. But with something like this connected, high settings, 1080p, I'm getting an average of around 80 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077. Way more playable here. We got a higher resolution, better settings, and overall it just performs really well. going into this, I didn't think I would like the GPD Win 3 as much as I actually do, given that it has that 5.5 inch screen. I am personally a big fan of these Tiger Lake CPUs, and I can't wait for the next revision. These 1165 G7s and even the 1135 G7 can put some decent graphics down, given that it's integrated. I do plan on making a couple more videos. I will have a full emulation test coming up soon, and if there's any other PC games you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for my first video on the GPD Win 3. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.